Welcome back. You're tuned into the My Cool Inventions Network. I'm Akos, the solutionist, your host, and co-hosting Andrew Jankura, my kid brother right here. Now, this is the part of the show, Andrew, <clears throat> where okay. we call Selling Secrets, right? Right. We've been featuring different different uh, people who uh, answer questions for the inventors, and we've been doing revealing some secrets. But today, uh, today, what we're going to do, uh, we have a, a thing that the boys have been trying to get us to do, and it's called Tony's Serious Question. All right, so we have no idea what he's going to ask. He's going to try to stump us. He's going to try to put us on the spot. And the whole thing about this is supposed to be a teaching moment. So I don't know what the hope he has a good question. I hope so. Hope it teaches uh, business owners and entrepreneurs and inventors something about selling. So, Tony, uh, so what is Tony's serious question? Serious question for the day, ACOS, is backstory. So, what is a backstory? Why do I need one? So backstory, what is a backstory and why do I need one? This is a really good question because, Andrew, as you know, when you're selling something, uh, for example, uh, um, you know, uh, you just want to take that last inventor. He's got the top hanger. He throws it out there. He didn't give us a backstory. He didn't. Actually, I asked about a backstory. You asked about it, yeah. I went dig deep and how, why did they invent it? What's going on with it? So why do you think a backstory, Andrew, is, uh, is important? Well, first of all, it's credibility. So it gives you credibility. It gives you sincerity, and when you do that, you touch touch on a nerve with everybody. That hey, man, I've been there. I've had that scenario. Uh, when I was, uh, I had I have experience doing door to door sales, and I did it for about ten years. I sold steaks and seafood door to door, and when I did that, uh, every time it was like you know, and it was expensive stuff. It was like a box of food for eighty five dollars, and it My was goodness. like who would buy sixteen chicken breasts for eighty five dollars? It was crazy. But all I had to do is start telling some of my recipes. Like how how I would stuff it with you know Swiss cheese and ham, and next thing you know I'm breading it, and people are seeing that. That's a story that's going along with the product, and all of a sudden they're like, yeah, I want to do that. I want that. And all of a sudden they don't even think about how much it costs. They don't care because they just want the product. So and that's what happens to that. So you deflected the whole. You deflected the objection of my goodness gracious, eighty five bucks for sixteen chicken breasts. Yeah. So you had this. You told us personal story. Absolutely. You told them how you're. You know, how what kind of recipes you do, and how you bread it, and how you make it tender, and right. how you make it juicy. Yeah. So now the customer's salivating, right? Yeah. And they actually buy into. Of course, you buy into it because when you're selling food, you buy into the sizzle. That's right. So you created a backstory and created this great sizzle, right? That's right. I'm gonna I'm gonna put him on the spot because yesterday we were in the we were picking up pianos. We used to be in the piano business, and <laughs> Andrew's been hunting around for some pianos. So we went and looked at a couple pianos yesterday. And we we're driving away, and I asked him, I go, how on earth? I mean, you talked about why would I buy? I'm gonna go back to his uh, and go back to his frozen food story. <laughs> okay. So why would I buy frozen food? Instead of going to buy fresh food, why would this frozen steaks and seafood? Why on earth would I buy a frozen steak or a frozen chicken breast right. instead of going to the store and right. buying a fresh one cheaper? Well, there's a few reasons. Okay, the first first of all, I said, well, it's probably fresher than fresh, which is kind fresher of a, kind of a fresh. little bit of, a, of exaggeration. But the truth is, uh, if they freeze it with liquid nitrogen, it takes about three seconds to freeze. So if you have a roast, say you go to the store and you buy a roast, okay, you buy a roast, but you're not going to cook it that evening. You bought it on sale, so you put it in your freezer, and that roast sits there for about mm, a day and a half before it actually freezes solid. You, you, when you buy it this way, when we were selling them, they're frozen for th uh, three seconds, four seconds, so instantly frozen, so all the, uh, all the goodness is still there. So when it thaws out, it's not. It's a little bit different than when uh, you're freezing your own stuff. So and 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 of course, that you people relate to that because they go, well, yeah. They of course we all go buy at the shop when it's on sale. You put it in your freezer. It's a relation. So it's, there's a backstory of that, and it convinces the person. Oh my goodness, you're right. It's fast freezing. It's uh, I'd rather have it that way. And that's how I got over that objection. So there is a backstory. You see what it did? It created sincerity. It created credibility, yeah. and actually deflected my whole thing about. 85 bucks for 60 chicken breasts. Have you lost your mind? Yeah, you're not even I, thinking about I'm it. I'm not even thinking about it anymore. Yeah. That's really that's a really good. I, yeah. I actually, I, he's is that good? That's a good backstory. So, and I'll tell you something backstory. One of the things when I'm working on television, I used to have a good friend of mine, David Carrera, and a lot of times he watches the show, so he might comment. He lives in Japan. <laughs> um, so, if you see David's up there, it's probably him it's commenting. <laughs> so, what happens is he used to be in my ear. You see, we wear, I don't know if you guys can see this, but we wear an earpiece here. We call this an IFB. So, what happens is the boys in the in production studio can talk to me.
me through the IFB. That's why you see the news. Ever seen the news anchor? Everybody's this down. just in. Well, he's holding his IFB closer to his ear. I mean, so they talk to us. And, I, and, and I used to, when I was doing live, I am still do live television. When I'm doing live television, the producer speaks to me. And one thing I learned from David Carrere when I was really young and really early in my TV career, he used to say, take him on a journey. Don't tell him features and benefits. Don't tell him like maybe Nicole uh, sells uh, uh, the candles. Don't say, well, this candle burns four hours and then you put the picture in front of it. And look, you can see your loved ones in the picture. Those are features and benefits, right? But it's not that interesting. He said, take them on a journey. And Andrews had a really, really good point there that when you take them on a journey, you start touching people. You start, because the more, for example, let's say I'm taking uh, selling stains are out, right? My stain remover. I would say, oh my goodness gracious, I have a dog. And my dog, oh my goodness, I love my dog. But sometimes, you know, when he's eating the food, he's really slobbering and gets all over the carpet. And the, so I'm telling a dog story. So all the dog viewers are going, well, yeah, yeah that's why I need too. a stain remover. I have a dog, right? Yeah. Or maybe I tell them another story. Oh, my goodness. Uh, uh, I was painting. And I don't know if how hard paint is to get out. But I had I got paint. You know, and again, what, I was supposed to put my painting shirt on. I didn't put my painting shirt on. I put my good shirt on. And wouldn't you know it? Of course, paint got on it. And, and But how much was my favorite shirt? And if I could fix my favorite shirt, my goodness, I would have paid 100 bucks for that stain remover right yeah. then. Because my Absolutely. shirt was worth more more to me than the stain, right? Again, I'm, create, I'm talking about a backstory, I'm yeah. creating credibility, I'm creating sincerity, and I'm touching everybody as I go along. And the more people I touch, the more people I actually uh, um, uh, relate to, the more people buy. Now, Joe Cup just said, backstory creates credibility, good point, ACOS. He's 100% right. Now, I've right. seen Joe Cup pitch, right? And Joe Cup, let me tell you something, Joe, I've watched your pitch, and by the way, this guy's amazing. This guy has so much passion and so much heart Heart. I'm trying to figure out how to get his product successful because this guy deserves it, right? And I think I want to, maybe you can comment on Joe Cup. We'll get him on here and do a pitch. I want to show you his tape. He's missing something on the offer. I think his passion is there, the credibility is there, but there's an offer issue there. Maybe he, I'll, I'll tell you about that later. But Joe, when you pitch, you talk about, hey, I can clean the car with this thing. Hey, I can soak up the thing. Here's the problem. Here's the solution. One thing you might be able to do better, and I know you did it once. I saw you do it once. You always tell the story. You should tell him a story. Listen, Listen, I, 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 what do I do every night? We go work out every night. I go to the shake place. It's a frozen shake, right? Yep. So a frozen shake, it's delicious. I love this shake. Oh, my gosh. I look forward to the shake. It's I salivate what I think. It's a peanut butter banana shake. It's called the protein. What is it called? The uh, peanut buster. or pe Oh, peanut my something. gosh. It's so fantastic. And yeah. after a hard workout, I just can't. I'm just waiting for it. And the sub is so ice cold. But in Florida, it's really hot. So what happens when it's so ice cold, it drips and it, and it gets wet. And I'll get all this dampness all on my Mercedes. And last thing I want to do is dampness on my Mercedes. And that's the problem. And now Joe Cup has the solution. He's got these uh, co the Coaster Pros in the go. You put it where the cup holder goes, and it solves that Ooh. problem. But Joe, do you see what I did there? Did you taste the peanut butter? Right? And Chocolate, and banana, yeah. ice cold, gorgeous after a hot workout on a hot day. And be, see what I did? It's a backstory. I gave you the backstory, I touched it. Instead of just telling me it soaks up the water, the point is tell a, tell a personal account, tell a personal account of how that how, how that helped you. You yeah. know, that that's important stuff. I mean, really, really important stuff. So the credibility of a backstory is everything because you take the customer on a journey, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let's do another example example. We used to do survival steel together. Yep. We used to go to every hook and bullet show, right? Yeah, absolutely. Remember that story? I, I got to tell All you guys times. this story. So we used to go to Harrisburg Sports Show. And I was a Canadian at the time. Now I'm an American now. But we used to go there. And it was odd to us that people would sell guns and bullets at shows. Yeah. So we're sitting there doing our little fire starter. And behind us is the Beretta booth, right? A Beretta <laughs> booth. They're yeah. selling handguns. <laughs> and right there, all the hot models and all the people are walking yeah. by. And remember that redneck guy? We were, we were, we were in, uh, in uh, co <laughs> State College, Pennsylvania. Oh, we and yeah. we were at Ted Nugent's Ted show. Nugent's Remember Ted Nugent's show? Nugent's yes, show. And that's where the Beretta booth was across from us. And the kid and the father are walking by, and the kid's going, Daddy, Daddy, I want a Beretta. And he looks at him and says, not to your 12, son. <laughs> a little disturbing to us, but uh, you know what I mean? Was, but we would sell a lot, of, a lot of things like that. But when we were selling survival steel, did we say, you know, this thing is three and a half inches long, and yeah. by the way, the handle's made it's, of ABS styrene and yeah. it's red? What did we say? We, well, we said we gave our camping days when we were Boy Scouts. 
right away. Every you know, as somebody's I went camping sometime when the wind's blowing or when it's wet outside, starts to rain. What are you gonna do? You're gonna you're gonna have to start somehow, if make a fire because you don't want to get cold, and th- then you open up the survival steel. You can show yes. it, show its features. Always about the backstory. When I'm selling, for example, the floor to ceiling laundry pole, the floor to ceiling mm-hmm. laundry pole, right, right, and I'm in uh, I'm in. So Nicole, it, it does, death doesn't sell on TV. No, it never sells on TV. I'll talk about no. that in a second. Yeah. On there, but I'm selling the floor to ceiling laundry pole. I'm not saying you need a floor, you need a ceiling, you put it in there and it's got this and it's got that. No. I'm saying things like, hey, you know when my daughter was young, you know Christina when she was young, what she used to yeah. do, she used to love going to church and she used to love picking her own clothes. So she used to go to her closet, right? And she saw the dress, she picked it up and she went poof. No, I don't want that one. And she put the next one, poof, on the floor. No, I don't want that. She had the, all the dresses on the floor because right. she liked the hand picker, and she couldn't reach them, so she pulled so them down. Pull them all down. Well, the floor to ceiling laundry pool, if I can adjust it to her height, she wouldn't have done. See what I did? Yeah. See what I did? Backstoried it with a personal account, and now customers going, yeah, I got kids. And you know, I, anyways, they we, we, we could talk about it all day long because we do it all day long. Yeah. And little couple tips. Nicole says, death doesn't sell great on TV. Never sells. No. Fear never Never sells. Right. Death never sells. We'll do another se- segment on, on selling secrets on that topic because we sell security devices and it's so easy to fall into this, uh, you know, fear. Yeah, fear, fear, fear sells never, never work. Works. Don't try them. Stay away from them. Yeah. But how do you sell a security system? Well, I'll teach you how on another episode of Selling Secrets. But <laughs> there's a little bit of insight. I love, Andrew, your insight. I love your input today about the fr- free sh- uh, lifetime free, sh- uh, life- uh, free refills for, for, life. for life. I love that. <laughs> so great to have you here and giving us that input but there's some selling secrets backstory right great question tony yep. on there what do you do i guess you have some spare time to make up these questions are we not working you hard enough oh no plenty hard it's plenty hard well that's a that pretty one. good question i gotta hand it to you yep. i guess the inventors liked it too so that's our tony producer tony in the background you can't see him but you can hear him on there that's my cool inventions selling secrets